Uh, Safosti Makurari, it's well known in Namibia because it's near endemic and it's protected by the law. It's protected by the law itself. And it's very easy to identify among all the other species. It looks very close to uh, the Moringa or to, uh, to Alu Dagodoma, the Tuga tree. But this one has so much big steps. And it's, it's like a succulent plant. It stores a lot of water in the stem itself. And this tree can stay for two to more than just without water. It stores a lot of water. Uh, you can close and you can see it's feeling. And when the first bug goes off, then it looks green. And when it's green like this, we usually take the sticks. If you make like this, there is a watering layer in this camera. Now this one is used for the dressing of corn. When you are cut it, then just have to stick with the stick and then if the uh, juice came out, then you just drag a dress direct on the wood. You are cut it over here. And the berries that it gets, the local people like Jamaraguga, they just eat the berries of it. Just eat the berries. And the little berries are just going to be the berries. And the berries are going to be the berries. After the flowers, they will take the berries. And then after the berries, they will start the berries. These are going to be the dining room. Now, this is the same trunk from this tree. And on this tree, we have something that is very different on the tree itself. Now this tree itself is called Gravia tenex. Gravia tenex, or in English they call it small leaf cross berry because it's a very small leaf and the berries they have a shape like cross. So it's called small leaf cross berry. But on this tree we have something that's very different. Now this one is called parasite. Parasite, it's a parasite. Yeah, call it mistletoe. Mm -hmm. uh, the birds called bailwing stallions, red-eyed bulbul, southern jellybird hornbills, they usually eat the berries of this tree. Because uh, when they come out, they look this green, the fresh berries, and when they become red, then they change the color to red. That's the time that the bird eats them. And when the bird leaves the dropping on the next tree, then it's where the parasite grows. And the parasite takes the whole water out of the trunk, and then the tree can die, caused by the parasite. Because the parasite takes the whole water. And here on the top, we have the flowers of the parasite. Now this is how the flowers look like. And in Africans, they call it Firogi stalk. Pirogi stock means matches stick. Matches mm -hmm. stick. Because it can be, uh, the matches sticks usually we find they are uh, yellow on the body, uh, brown or some colored on the head. And this one is red on the body and green on the head. Pirogi stock, matches stick. Uh, these parasites are eaten by games as well as stock. They also like to eat the parasites. First of all, welcome to Small Bushman's Paradise. Small Bushman's Paradise. Uh, we have also the Bushman Paradise, but that's now at the east of the Pollock Mallet. But many of the paintings of the Bushman Paradise are vandalized and damaged by the uh, former visitors. And these are the paintings that you can see much more clear. Uh, these paintings have been done by the Sun people. Sun, or the Bushman. Sun is a uh, Naman word, which means the collectors of wild food. Sun means the collectors of wild food. And the Germans call them Bushmen, or the Germans call them Bushmen. Why they call them Bushmen is uh, they was hunter gatherers and they were nomadic people. They didn't stay with one place for the long time because they have to follow the rain and the animals. And during their travel, they travel through the bushes to reach the next destination. So if they arrive at a place like this, now this overhang, it's provide good shelter to them, and they doesn't get a direct wind or even a direct sunlight. So they just to stay the places like this and they just a light case and during their stay they draw the paintings draw the paintings and within this area we have about seven different sites where we find the bushman paintings or the rock paintings and the age of the paintings are dated between last 200 to 4000 years ago and last 200 to 4000 years ago they draw the paintings now that's the period that the bushman was present in this area or the sun was present in this area uh, we have the paintings within red brown and we have the paintings within white uh, the paintings of in red brown, the bushmen, they take the stone called ochre, you know ochre stone? And they crush the ochre stone, and when the stone becomes in powder, they mix it with the freshly slatted animal's blood to draw the paintings. And sometimes they use the end of the finger to draw the paintings within fine lines, 
as well as the bones of the animals, <coughs> the feathers from all streets and small birds, and even the purple pan quail that they were used to throw the paintings with. And here we have a two bushmen. So the two bushmen, uh, both of them, they stand like this. And if they are going out for the hunting, uh, they just really hide to get close to the animals. So they walk down and they are on the way of hunting. And here we have a rhino. The rhino, a rhino, giraffe and the yellow was a supernatural power animal to the bushman. Because when the bushman or the sun saw the rhino, uh, they believe the rain is on the way. And the direction that the rhino face directs the next group where they can find the nearest water hole or a rock pool to get the water. <coughs> and here we have the raining bushman and the one on the back is with its bow. And these are the hunters. If you come close then you can see some of them they carry their uh, bows on the arrow and they are on the wheel funding. Uh, the raining bushman and the one on the back of it. Now this the raining bushman uh, means that he is raining after the animal. And before they're going out for the hunting, the bushmen, they just sort of poison their arrows <laughs> with the plant called Ephobia virosa. That's another poisonous tree, and they poison their arrow. And if they shoot the animal, then they run after it. When it falls, then they cut the place out where they shoot the animal. So this is the running one, and this is the hunter with the bow on the back, with me. and these are the hunters on the way. Now they are on the way of hunting. Ah, here we have a bushman, it's only the head, the arms and the body. We will come back to it. And this is the elephant. See the whole body, no head and only the tongue. And this bushman has a head, body, no arms and the legs. And this bushman, the head belongs to the animal. It's like a lion, it's open its mouth and there is no arms, no body, but only the legs. And similar to this one, it's the same. Ah, the bushmen perform the dance called trance dance. Trance, do you hear about trance dance? Trance dance. Ah, it's like, it's a, it's like a belief. Uh, so it's a belief and a tradition that they perform. It's a way, if they're going out for the hunting, before they're going out for the hunting, then they have to perform the trance, because they believe it's a belief that they do. And they dance the trance then for three different purposes, for successful hunting, rain remarking, and healing of sick person. And when they perform the healing of sick person, the several bushmen, they dance in the circle, with their singing songs, clapping hands, and radio sounds, and the shaman is the one who is healing the sick person in the group. Shaman is the sick person in the group. And when the group in the trance, they cannot control themselves because they feel like they are dizzy. And uh, while he is busy to draw the lion or uh, the elephant, then the mind changes. Then he just see the picture of lion or something else or even like this. When he is busy to draw the animals, then the mind changes and he see the picture of human being and he draw the half part of human. And this the paintings like this is called half animal and half human. So they end up in the trance and the, the pictures that they see just change from what they are busy to draw. I mean, he's busy to draw the animal and they draw the head of human beings. So it's where they end up in the trance and they cannot control themselves. And down here we have a lion. This is a lion, kind of animal. And here we have a zebra. Now this is within white. This is not a zebra. Uh, the paintings within white, uh, the bushmen, they take the white milk from the Ephobia trees and mix it with the ostrich egg yolk white and draw the paintings within white. Any questions about it? How did they determine the age? <laughs> 4,000 years. How did they determine that? Nah, because in the last 200 years, the Berg Tamaras or the mountain Tamaras came in this area and that's the time that the bushmen leave the area. And it's between 4,000 to, to 200 years. So in that period, the bushman was present, but it was a different groups. It, uh, the one groups make 25 people, men, women, and children make the group of 25. And it might be that the one group came and just draw this rhino. It, it might be in 4,000 years, and then they continue. And the one, next one came and just draw these hunters in 3,000 years, and then they continue. And so it stayed uh, that long period of taking. Do you know the age of individual? Then, you don't know the age of that drawing, that drawing. Uh, uh, No one knows the right age, but they take a uh, period that the birth of came in and the period that the birth of came in. That long before that it took. And Bushmen and the Namas, those are the tribes who use the clicks. 
Those are the tribes which use the clips in Namibia. We have also puzzles from South Africa, but uh, they are from South Africa, they also use the clips. But in Namibia, we have three different tribes which use the clips. And Damaras and Damas, they use the same clip, but the Bushmen, they have seven clips. And we as the Damaras and Damas, we have four. Now, like this one, just like a one that. And two ones close to it, that. <laughs> then you have the one and two ones across, that's now. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. And the last one is just a one mm. and a pull and I need. Now that's the clicks that we choose. Uh, for example, I'm a Damara Nama speaking guy. And if I meet with my friend Damara and then I greet him, then I say, first of all, Madisa. Madisa, that's the first click, it will be easy for you to know. Madisa. Madisa, Madisa. Madisa means how are you? And if he responds, it's fine, then he says, Tangya. Tangya. Madisa, Tangya. Uh, then for Tangya, then we just use click. Tangya. 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 Yeah, it's going to be difficult for you. Uh, and like, for example, if I. I'm I'm a Nama I'm Tamara Bull and I want to propose uh, the Nama lady and if I meet her for my first time and tell her that I love her then I say Nam Sidagia Nam Sidagia that's I love you Nam and if you say to the man if the lady say to the man then if you say Nam Sidagia Nam Sidagia that's for the man and if the man says to the lady then he say Nam Sidagia Nam Sidagia and for example, for these two ones which close to each other, I'm thirsty and I need water. I want to ask water. Then water in our language is tummy. Tummy. Tummy Audrey. Can you can you help me with water? Tummy Audrey. Tummy Audrey. Tummy Audrey. Tummy Audrey. Tummy Audrey. And the dinner time, and you came together on the table, and you say, "Idan, Audrey." Let's eat dinner time. Dinner. Mm? Then you do this one. Mm? Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Nah, nah, nah. Basking Nasa. Basking Nasa. I'm going to work on that. <laughs> what do you tell a girl on the second date? On the second date. Uh, if you say, if you say, I love you too, then you go on. <laughs> I go to dinner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then, then you go for the dinner. Then you go for the maybe yeah. while you are busy to propose it, then you get first this, and you say, "Tell me how to Then she helps you up the world. And then you get hungry. Then you say, "Oh my, how Then you go for the dinner. And and you want to leave. Then you say, "Oh my, how and you just say, I'm going. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Quite difficult, man. Eh? And the Damaras and the Bushmen, they doesn't understand each other. They don't? They don't? Yeah, it doesn't understand each other. Because the Bushmen, they have seven clicks, and the way that they pronounce is also different from us. Like, oh, God, God, God. It's totally different from us. Yeah, that sounded completely yeah. yeah. different. I wanted to say that was good. Mm -hmm. Can you do the seven clicks? Oh, no, no, no. Man. It's difficult. And even the way that they write it, it's uh, completely different. Like we say, and they write the ones like this, lying ones and so on. Very different from the way that they write it. We are eating. Tango, man. Tango. 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 Is it fine? Yes. Yeah. 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 What, what is yes? Yes. Anua. 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 And if you say thank you very much, then you say kai ayos. 
K I O S. Yeah, that's There's no click. Yeah, no click. K I O S. But you can make one if you want. K I O S. Just gonna carry it quicker. Like Marisa, it's about click. But if you respond and you say thank you, then thank you will be click. Marisa, thank you. How are you? I'm fine. And you too, Satina. <laughs> okay, let's go. Siria Ire. Siria Ire. If you are ready, how are you? Tanya. Tanya. Or if it is bad, then you say Tanya. Tanya. If it is bad, maybe I ask you Marisa, then it doesn't feel okay, then you say Tanya. It's bad. Or if it is fine, then you say Tanya. I can't. Tanya. Okay, guys. Now, yeah. like, this is also one of the trees well known in Namibia because it's juice able, very, very juice able. Uh, this one is called Camifora glaucusin. Camifora glaucusin, in English, they call it blue leaf cockwood. Blue leaf cockwood. It's cockwood. Very, very good smell, huh? Mm -hmm. Uh, the tree itself, when the tree becomes dead, then the trunks of the tree becomes very light and very easy to carve the things out of it. Just where they carve the baskets out of it, the animals, and they then, uh, then sell it to the foreigners like you guys. Uh, but the trunks or the smell that you get from this trunk are the local people like Hereros, Damaras, in the area that they have this tree. Usually they take these such uh, small uh, branches and then they put it in a water before they bath for 10 to 15 minutes. And after 10 to 15 minutes, well, because uh, if you break then you're gonna see the watering ladder is coming out like on top of here. So if that uh, watering ladder dissolves in the water, the water has that smell. And if they bath off the water, the smell remains on their body. So they were just like a perfume on the Kamifora glucose and blue leaf cocoa. Tango. Nah, nah. <laughs> uh, these are the time that the ants are active. So this is the time that they collect the seeds, fruits and so to store in their nest. Uh, in this area we have the grass called stibocrastic. Stibocrastic damarana. It's a damara or bushman or extended grass. Or extend it's like if, if it is fresh, then it's a bit uh, bushy tail on the top, then it's called orange paint grass. Um, it carries the flower, the seeds on it, and when it became dry, then the seeds falls underneath the grass, and that's the time that the ants collect them and store in their nest. And then we have also the small plant which grows such as this, which is called wild men, and the ants they also collect those seeds and store it in their nest. And when the rain comes, then it gets wet inside, then they carry it out in large amount to let it dry. That's the time that the local people, the Tamara people, collect this. And then they collect it in large amount. Sometimes they put it in the big containers, uh, work for water, and just add the honey or the sugar, and let it stand for two to three days. After two to three days, then they drink as a homemade beer, home brew. And after two to three glasses, then you feel, oh, something is going on with me. And even those seeds, they take them, and then they roast it, and then they eat it. It's also very good for eating. Are we together? Are we together? Thank you. Okay, guys. by the wind and weather erosion, it forms this bridge. Uh, from the other side of the bridge, you can have a view to the Ponok Mountains, and from there, you can have a view to the speech you know? And from the middle, then you can have the boat.
and here on the top we have the flowers of the parasite. Now this is how the flowers looks like. And in Africans they call it pirogi stock. Pirogi stock means matches stick. Matches mm -hmm. stick. Because it can be, uh, the matches sticks usually we found they are uh, yellow on the body, uh, brown or some colored on the head. And this one is red on the body and green on the head. Pirogi stock or matches stick. Uh, these parasites are eaten by games as well as stock. They also like to eat the parasites. First of all, welcome to Small Bushman's Paradise. Small Bushman's Paradise. Uh, we have also the Bushman Paradise, but that's... Uh, Safostima Kurori, it's well known in Namibia, because it's near endemic, and it's protected by the law. It's protected by the law. Itself. And it's very easy to identify among all the other species. It looks very close to uh, the Moringa or to... Uh, to Alu Dagodoma, the Tuga tree, but this one has so much big stem. And it's, it's like a succulent plant. It stores a lot of water in the stem itself. And this tree can stay for two to more than just without water. It can store a lot of water. Uh, you can close and you can see it's feeling neighboring. And when the first bug goes off, then it looks green. And when it's green like this, we usually take the sticks. If you make like this, there is a watering layer in this camera. Now this one is used for the dressing of moments. When you are cut it, then just have to stick with the stick and then if the uh, juice came out, then you just drag a dress direct on the wood. You are cut it over here. But on this tree we have something which is very different. Now this one is called parasite. Parasite, it's a parasite. Yeah, call it mistletoe. Mm -hmm. uh, the birds called bailwing stallions, red eyed bulbuls, southern yellow bird hornbills, they usually eat the berries of this tree. Because uh, when they come out they look this green. The fresh berries. And when they become red, then they change the color to red. That's the time that the bird eats them. And when the bird leaves the dropping on the next tree, then it's where the parasite grows. And the parasite takes the whole water out of the trunk, and then the tree can die, it's caused by the parasite. Because the parasite takes the whole head. And it just grows the medicine. And the berries that it gets, the local people like Jamara, because they just eat the berries of it. Just eat the berries. This is the same trunk from this tree, and on this tree we have something that is very different on the tree itself. Now this tree itself is called Gravia tenex. Gravia tenex, or in English they call it small leaf cross berry, because it's a very small leaf, and the berries they have a shape like cross. So